Hey guys, welcome to our channel Coders Arcade. This is Ashang David and in today's video, we are going to talk about Jupyter Notebook. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how Jupyter Notebook looks like and how you can start your data science project into your Jupyter Notebook. So before I even start this video, guys, I would like to request you people to please like, share and subscribe to our channel Coders Arcade and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you won't miss any future updates. And without any further ado, let's get right into the topic. So before we start guys, this video is going to be the continuation of our data science playlist where in the last video of our playlist, we have told you about how you can install Anaconda distribution into our systems and how you can start working with Jupyter Notebook. But in this video, let us see how Jupyter Notebook actually looks like and I'll give you an overview of um, what are the things your Jupyter Notebook contains and I'm going to show you how you can use it for your upcoming data science projects. So first of all, before I even go ahead, I'll just open up my Anaconda Navigator and I'm going to show you how your Anaconda Navigator used to look like. In the previous video, we have installed this. If you have not seen that video yet, I would recommend you to see that video first and then come to this video because uh, you need to install Jupyter Notebook and to install Jupyter Notebook, we need to install Anaconda distribution in our system. And once you have installed it, then you get the Jupyter Notebook. So this is how your Anaconda Navigator looks like. This comes after installing Anaconda distribution into your system. And uh, this is how your, it looks like. So once you installed it, in the last video we have installed this and from here we used to launch our Jupyter Notebook. And once you've launched it, you might have seen in that video that it opens up into our C drive, which we don't want. We want to open up this Jupyter Notebook into our custom folder. For example, I am going to go to this particular folder and here, um, this is my folder where I need to open up my Jupyter Notebook where I'll keep all my files into one place. So this is the folder. Okay, now if I want to open up my Jupyter Notebook here, see if you open up your Anaconda distribution, from there, if you are opening your Jupyter Notebook, here it will open up into your C drive. But I don't want to open up there. I want to open up into my customized folder, which I just showed you right now. So I want to open up somewhere here. So how to do that? To do that, here you can see the search bar, right? Here I can just type CMD and press enter and this CMD open up here for us into this particular folder. Okay, now I'll just uh, zoom this in for you. And here I can just type here Jupyter Notebook and press enter. This will open up our Jupyter Notebook into this particular browser. So this is our browser and you can see that this opens up into a Chrome browser. Why did it open up into a Chrome browser? Because Jupyter Notebook doesn't have its own graphical user interface. So it uses our internet browsers graphical user interface to open up into your system. This we have already discussed in the previous videos, guys. So this is how your Jupyter Notebooks looks like. So in my Jupyter Notebook, instead of opening up into my C drive, it opened up here into my D drive, into this particular folder. And from now, I can just create my notebooks. So this is just an empty folder right here. And uh, to create your notebook here, what you can do is you can click here in the new option. And you can see that there are multiple options coming up. Python 3, IPy kernel text file, folder, terminal. So if you want to create any subfolder into this folder, you can just click onto this folder and it'll create a folder right here. And by the way, this is our uh, main folder where I have uh, clicked onto CMD and opened up my Jupyter Notebook. Here I will click onto new and here I will click onto Python 3 IPy kernel. And this is going to open up a new Jupyter Notebook for us. And if you go back here, you can see that untitled.ipynb has been created into this particular folder. And which particular folder I'm, I'm talking about? I'm talking about this particular folder. So you can see this. This is our YouTube Jupyter Notebook project. And here only I had gone, right? Okay, now in this case, I come back to my Jupyter Notebook and this is how your Jupyter Notebook look like when you open this for the first time, we have created our IPy kernel Python 3 Jupyter Notebook from here, right? This will open up a new instance of a notebook right here and you can see this is how it looks like. Now to name this uh, Jupyter Notebook, here you can see untitled, right? Here you can give the name of the notebook. So I can just say my notebook, something like this. 
and I can click on to rename and this is going to rename this my notebook and you can see that it changed my notebook dot ipynb right now we have renamed this and automatically this notebook will save as you can see just now it saved automatically so if you want to manually save your jupyter notebook you can either click onto this floppy drive or you can go to file and then you can save from here by clicking on to save as or you can just directly click onto this floppy drive as i told you okay so now this is your code cell right here you can see this is our first code cell what is this code cell guys code cell is the place where you are going to write your code so for example i said print and i said uh, hello okay so you can see you already know how to write a basic python code right so this is how you can print anything into your python right so if i say print hello and if you want to run this what you can do is you can click onto this run button and it runs it for you and you can see the output here only see i said print and then hello right so it printed the output right here but when you don't say anything such as print and if you run this you can see that it says out what is this out see in python uh, jupyter notebook what happens is even when you don't want to directly print your output it gives you it shows you the output into this out window so this is this is the place where you uh, get the output you can see everything and this is this is the reason why in data science we use jupyter notebook much because when you create graphs and when you do plotting into using different different libraries such as matplotlib or something like that automatically you will see the graphs coming up here only and you can what you can do is you can um, save this or you can download this whole notebook from here like this as a pdf or so it gives you a nice report when you when it comes to Jupyter Notebook. You can use any other IDE also to do your data science projects, but most probably Jupyter Notebook will work best in this case as we recommend because here only you can see the output of each and every single line there and there only. And Python is the best language to go through it because it's an interpreted language as we already know about this also, guys. So this is your uh, printing part. Let's say we write something else. I said one plus one. See, if I want to run this code, I can just click onto this run button, but let's say if you don't want to click onto this run button, what you can do is you can press onto shift plus enter. And you can see after print, after saying shift plus enter, it showed me the output right here. So you can see that right now I just say one plus one. It directly showed me the output right here. Let's say if I don't want to see this out, I can just write this whole thing into our brackets and I can say print and if I want to run this again shift plus enter and this way this out has gone that means now it is printed towards the terminal okay but let's say I don't want to print it I just said shift plus enter you can see it just showed you what will be the output of this particular code if you run this code and you can see this number coming up right so two five two five what is this number this number tells us tells you this recent step so this is the fifth step that we are done so this was the second step and because we were overwriting the same code cell it was overwriting the number also in the same uh, cell as well okay so this is how your um, code cell works now i showed you shift plus enter right so shift plus enter will run the code now you can come up to this and you can press alt plus enter also so when you are into this particular cell and if you press alt plus enter not only it will show you the output of that particular cell but also it will insert a new cell into this after this particular code cell it will actually insert a new code cell also before from where you uh, pressed alt plus enter so this is how you can insert a cell as well in between of your Jupyter notebook. So if I, if I press Alt plus Enter, you can see Alt plus Enter, Alt plus Enter. It keeps on inserting new and newer and newer code cells for you to write the programs into. Okay, so now you can press on to this, and I have already told you how to can save. You can just see that automatically after some times it will auto save the whole content, or you can press Control plus S to manually save, and this gets saved to your particular notebook or you can go to file and then you can say save as to save this notebook i've already told you how to save this okay now next sometimes what happens is that let's say you are writing some infinite loop so you wrote some particular loop which is an infinite loop okay so let's say this is an infinite uh, loop so if you by chance by mistake you have gone into an infinite loop which is a very bad 
loop let's say you have gone into infinite while loop in this case and once you run this code it will go into infinite loop this i'm just saying i'm not running this but i'm just showing you if by chance you go into this infinite loop then what to do how to stop your jupyter notebook you might have seen once we go into infinite loop it gives us a problem and it doesn't stop so we need to manually stop it so how to stop it what you can do is in jupyter notebook we have this option called as kernel so you can go to kernel and you can either say interrupt or you can shut down or you can restart the kernel better is restart because after restarting the kernel it says do you want to restart the current kernel all versions will be all variables will be lost you can say continue running and you can see like this or you can just say restart and just click on to restart and you can see that it, it restarts and your whole uh, while loop which is infinite will stop there and again you'll get the chance to write the code read so this is how you can do it if you have accidentally fell into infinite loop okay then another thing is you can do markdowns also to do markdowns also let's say i what is this markdown first of all let's say do you don't want to uh, write uh, this as a code block what you can do is you can click here and instead of this code you can check into markdown and this becomes a markdown code okay so this is not a code cell now it's a markdown cell so if you run this code you can see that you can write it like this and you can create different different headings also if you do the same thing let's say if you if you want to revert the change you can just select that cell again and you can just click onto this and change it to code back and it becomes this code cell again so let's say i am into markdown right now and if you put this see if you put this uh hashtag and then if you press space it will become into a markdown heading and if you uh, run this it will it will be like a markdown heading for you so these are the things that comes very handy when it comes to jupyter notebook working with jupyter notebooks and and this is how you can work with your jupyter notebook so these are the things that i wanted to tell you before even we start working with data science projects and this is how your jupyter notebooks looks like and i have given you an overview of how jupyter notebook works so i told you these are the code cells how to run your code what are the different shortcuts that we will be using into our project in depth all right guys so that's how you can do that's all for this video guys if you have any doubts you can tell us in the comment section below and we will try to clear all your doubts as soon as possible and if you are watching this video and if not seen our previous videos from this playlist for data science i would recommend you guys to go there and check our other videos into this playlist also and i'll give you the link in the description below as well as in the i button right up there so that's all for this video guys thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one this is ashang david signing off happy learning